Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Um, take these off for a minute because my eyes are tired. It's kind of late. I just wanted to show you something, give you an update on a couple of things. Um, okay. I was talking about uh, the keloids, about, well, somebody reminded me, and I'm thankful that there are people that are really watching the videos. And they said it's been about five months since I did an update. And I said, well, it's going to be five months, but it has. Because we've been in this quarantine thing for like three months at least since February. Let's see. End of February, March, April, May. And this is June. And it, it might have even been longer than five months that I did that video. But they knew. And so I thank you so much for checking on me. Um, but anyways, that aspirin that I was using, um, they were asking me and saying that, well, yeah, that they would like to try it. That's up to you. Um, I wouldn't hold me to it because I'm not really that regular at doing these regimens. I kind of didn't do it every single night, but the nights that I did do it, I felt like I was getting a little lightheaded from the aspirin and, um... I got some tiny little bumps, you know, like developed and like an, a rash type thing. So I don't know if that came from that or not, but because I tried a different soap too, you know, I was using it. My daughter got me a different kind of soap and I don't know, because I'm, I'm allergic to certain soaps and things like that. So I'm not sure if it was that or if it was the aspirin. I just stopped doing the aspirin for a little while. It seemed like it was kind of working, but it was like around... The keloid, it seemed like it was getting irritated, like, or something, you know. I'm like, wait a minute, maybe I better not use it. It seemed like it was trying to work, but I wasn't using it every day either. So, because of the lightheadedness and stuff like that that I was dealing with. But I did drink coffee, like, late and stuff like that. So, I don't know, really. I cut out the coffee after three. My therapist told me, don't drink coffee after three. She said, she didn't tell me don't drink it, but she said it's, like, been heard that if you drink after three then you can possibly not get any sleep because I've been having like insomnia on some nights and um, I slept really good the other day after I talked to my therapist and I didn't drink after three I just poured my coffee out if I even if I just started drinking it and it got cold and I was busy working or whatever doing stuff and I had my coffee, I usually would heat it up, you know, and just finish drinking it throughout the day. But I didn't do it this time, and I slept well. So that's good for the sleeping part. But going back to the keloid, um, I have some baking soda in here. And I also have hydrogen peroxide. Now, those, that's, I've just started trying to use that a, a couple of days ago. And it seems like the first day that I used it, it was having irritation, you know, like it was like really like, like itching. I'm like, oh my. But the second day, excuse me, I didn't have that problem. Like the next day it was, it, it was over with, but the, the next day I tried it and it wasn't having that interaction. But, you know, I'm, it's still too early to really tell if it's working. But what I would not do is I wouldn't listen to what I'm saying because I have a different body than what you would have. And you're saying you wanted to try it. And the person knows who I'm talking to that inquired about it. So that I would not go by what I'm saying because I don't know if your body will react the same way that I did. The aspirin might work for you depending on what type of keloid that you have, depending on how big it is, depending on um, a lot of different factors, what your body is used to or whatever um, so you know you just have to try it if you want to try it then that's up to you but I'm not gonna say to try it because like I said oh excuse me like I said I'm no expert <clears throat> and I'm not a doctor and I, I'm not gonna tell you to do that <laughs> then you'll be typing me and say hey you you said that, uh, but I don't want you to say that and I don't want you to feel bad if it doesn't work and it, or something happens. You know, I don't want you to blame me because I'm saying that it works for me or if it doesn't work for me. It, it, it doesn't, it seems like I had an interaction. 
or a reaction to it my body did so I quit using the aspirin but I might go back to it later if I'm finding out that it wasn't a reaction from that but I think it was doing something else you know like it might have been healing up I don't know but actually I just stopped doing it because I just felt like there was things going on so I'm gonna try this it's about a tablespoon it doesn't look like it. it looks like way more but there's about a tablespoon of the uh, baking soda there's more than that because I added more and then there's about a tablespoon of this three tablespoons of this now what you do is you go and look on YouTube and you look at baking soda hydrogen peroxide for or Google it rather for keloid and you can see that the consi the different how much you're supposed to put because I can't remember right now um, let me see let me check really quick for you okay I'm not gonna do that to you um, but if you're gonna try the aspirin you know just use like a couple of the aspirins and I wouldn't I had 350 uh, milligrams and those that's a lot so you might want to use a smaller oh, I don't even know why I'm telling you that because I don't know if you should use it or not in all honesty um, hydrogen peroxide And okay, I put hydrogen peroxide and keloids. That's all you do. You type that in. Put this hair sticking out right there. I put some oil in the front right here. My bangs, and they're just oof. I didn't straighten them, guys, so that's why they're looking crazy. Um. Okay. Some say to avoid using hydro hydrogen peroxide. Um, but I mean don't just put it by itself, okay? No, don't put it by itself. It's probably why it was mine was itching like that or in pain. I was in pain. Okay, you can use baking soda. Um it says using a baking soda scrub to exfoliate the keloid will remove the dead cells as well as lighten the scar. And it says how to use it. It says it used two tablespoons of baking soda and two tablespoons of 3% diluted hydro hydrogen peroxide. I think that's what this is. Yeah, but... You know, it didn't say all that on the other one that I saw, but it does, That you see how much though, right? So two and two. So that makes it a nice paste. It mixes well together and make a paste. Apply this paste on your keloid for half an hour. Now the other one told me 20 minutes. So these people have different things. Wash it off with water and moisturize your skin with Olay Regenerous. Revitalizing Night Cream Moisturizer. I use regular lotion. Maybe that's going to help if you use the other one. I don't know. The, pr the procedure must be repeated two to three times a day to work effectively. Okay, now, the other one that I read, it said twice a day. Now, this says two to three times. So, you can do two to three times. So, what I just read is what it, I looked up on uh, Easy Spa Deals. Okay, that's the name of it. Easy Spa Deals. And it tells you about instant home remedies for keloid removal at home. Okay. I'm actually going to put the star there and save that bookmark it. Because I think that sounds pretty. Oh, that's so rude for me, huh? <laughs> but that sounds pretty good. You guys, I'm just sleepy. I guess because I didn't drink all that coffee like I usually do. And I'm glad because I want to be sleepy. I gotta get up early tomorrow. It's already the next day. 
So anyways, stay tuned too. Uh, even though it's time for me to go to bed, I'm going to do a little bit of the awake. Awake, isn't it? Interesting how I'm sleepy. I'm going to do awake and that will wake me up. Okay, but this is an interesting uh, article because I'm a little bit behind on reading uh, reading the magazines that I normally read. Um, I just got a little thrown off because of this quarantine thing and the things are just jumbled up. There's all kinds of crazy stuff going on out there, but I'm trying to keep up to date on some of the things and I want to actually help everybody. You know, like I want to share with you guys and so... I feel bad because it's two weeks I think we've missed of any good news. So this is really good information right here that I'm going to talk to you about. It's introduction is, and this is what it's talking about. Excuse me. And we're talking about, let me tell you what we're talking about. Five questions about suffering answered, okay, in the introduction. So if you want to see it, this is what we're going to talk about. At some point, everyone is affected by tragedy, perhaps an illness, an accident, a natural disaster, or an act of violence. People search for answers. Some attribute suffering to fate or in some other way feel that we have little control over what happens to us. Ooh, let me sit back for a minute. For some reason my back is hurting. Others believe in karma. They say that we suffer because of something bad that we did earlier in life or in a past life. Tragedy often leaves people with more questions than answers. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm just reading what the introduction is. Look at how I'm just looking. Okay, I'm reading how the introduction is. And that's something that you would probably be interested in because I don't know who wouldn't want to be interested in that because there's so many things are happening today. Okay, now this is taken from the Awake number two, and it's a 2020 article. Okay, so. Please look for the second video that I'm going to make for the night. Five questions about suffering answered. And I'm going to be doing parts, okay? There's going to be quite a few parts to that. Um, what some believe. And number one, it says, is God to blame for our suffering? Are we to blame for our suffering? Why do people suffer? Were we meant to suffer? Will suffering ever end? And help is available. Okay, so those are the things I'm going to address. And what it does is it takes you to your Bible, your own copy of the Bible, I'll say, because we know who made who the Bible belongs to, but you can buy a copy and that will be your copy, your personal copy. And that's where it takes you, this article. So that way, it's not to replace the Bible or anything. It's just to give us answers that it has in the Bible that are really, really beneficial for our lives today. I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh, the Bible's so old-fashioned. I, I don't, I don't, that's okay, you know, all right. But then you're suffering. You're like, oh, well, dang, this is so horrible what's going on in the world. It's bad, you know. Look at what's going on. You know, this is happening and that's happening. It makes me very nervous, you know. So people are saying those things. So what better way to ease your mind and to actually get some answers that will help you be more comfortable in the world that we're living in today because you have to be comfortable enough so you're not panicking so you're not eat drink and be merry or because tomorrow we're gonna die type attitude or get angry and start you know doing cruel things to other people because you're not understanding why these things are happening or blame God you know or whatever you know Whatever is going on with the life today, um, it's going to be very helpful if we're able to see why these things are happening or how we can find a solution, okay? So check out the next video, and hopefully you will enjoy it and share it with somebody. Um, meditate on it. Um, go back over the information, and you can address it yourself. But anyways... Um, This is what I went on there for, the peroxide and the baking soda. For the person that was inquiring about it, I thank you so much again. And yes, um, it seemed like it was doing a little better, but it's not the result that I wanted because I felt like I was getting some side effects. And um, it's probably like a drug interaction because 
might not have been, but I'm thinking it is because um, an aspirin is a drug. And if you're putting it on your body and it's going in your bloodstream somehow, in your skin and then into your blood, it could have an effect. So I'm not going to say for you to, to do it. If you want to try it, it's up to you. You know, just Google about keloids and there's other things. There's other also other ways to do it. Instead of doing home remedies, because those are like trial. Um, I have gone to the to the doctor and they removed my keloid before, but it came back. And uh, now I'm trying to get rid of it again and I'm not going to go to the surgery again and get it taken off because for some reason I'm prone to, to getting them. And there has to be a different solution for me now. Um, they have laser and stuff like that too that might have to be the next bet because if I can't do it a solution like this um, so whatever way you've been trying maybe try it or you know see your physician and they could probably let you know or if this works you know it's up to you if you want to try it or not or maybe the aspirin will work for you I don't know but I just go and explore and try and see and I try and ask people or show so that way if you have a solution then you can let me know that's why I basically put it on there so that it could be seen worldly around the world so that if somebody really knows about it and they're like oh I've had that before and it, this definitely worked for me it may not work for me but at least I would be willing to try it if it's something safe so that I can see if it will work for me and um, you know I'm willing to try it so anyways you guys thank you subscribers have a good day and look for the next video